volcanic swampland, dinosaur mm. All right. ground. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, waterfall. There are two waterfalls in the southwest, although it's got a little curvature, but waterfalls yeah. in the southwest. And, and then you've got the Capitol Reef. I believe that what the, ep the episode we've lost is, an ep is a maritime civilization which sailed the whole world. That's why we have the maps. And, um, and that's why we have very few traces. I think they lived on coastlines, they, which were the best lands to live on. The sea was a major resource for them. You know, they stayed out of the interior. You know, you had undoubtedly uh, Stone Age hunter-gatherers coexisting on the same planet with um, you know, more advanced kind of... Uh, but um, what I always point out is that's not so strange because we have that effect. We're not part of the Amazon and find people who don't know anything about us at all. Your thoughts on some of them as well, because it has, this cave has the, um, has the DNA strands or what, what you might call Please show me, show me. Yeah, show let's, me. we need to walk out. So it's even like touching, breathing on it is, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, so. Mm. You can just absolutely count on it. The universal themes just come up again and again. Ladders, zigzags, figures. You said there's a spiral up here? Well, uh, well uh, like DNA. Here we go, yeah. Yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same device on rock faces in South Africa. Just identical to this. You think they had cell phones or what? No, I, I think they <laughs> <was>. <laughs> <You> think <laughs> They had pocket computers. They had decoder rings. They had telepathy. They had decoder no, rings. Yeah. No, because they're they're going they're going to the same parallel worlds. So yeah. I mean, coming back with the same images. It's, yeah. it's observation. You know, yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's a universal observation. You can just absolutely count on it. You will find it wherever there is. Yeah, a that's amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, right there, you know, this 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 pattern of diamonds or double helix, these these zigzag lines and the, and the ladders. There's there's three of the absolute most frequent motifs in the European caves and in really? South, South African yeah. rock shelters as well. Um, and here it is uh, in, in America, and it's plain. I mean, it's uh, it's an art of altered states of consciousness, and um, this is what you see as you enter those realms. Yeah, who's this little guy down here? The more little zigzag, the dark one? Tear, yeah. More, more of the same. More of the zigzag. Oh, so I mean, the technical term for these is... Uh, entoptic phenomena. The entoptic phenomena. The, well, yeah. that's the, I mean, that's the, t the technical term given to these. W w wherever you find rock and cave art, you find figures, but you also find patterns. And those can be grids, zigzags, dots. And what, are of dots. I mean, what are they well, representing? What they, what they represent is, is, what, um, is what almost everybody who enters a deeply altered state of consciousness sees as they begin. The, it's usually typically in the earlier part of the journey. Um, you know, these scintillating patterns and zigzag lines and starbursts and, and dots, clouds of clouds of dots. It's very, very. very so it's not, it's not any sort of calendar. No, or definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. It's, it's, uh, I, I think the most convincing explanation for just about all the rock art in the world is it's art of shamanism. And the shamans were in deeply altered states of consciousness. Not when they painted it, they would typically use a, a, a plant uh, hallucinogen, enter a deeply altered state of consciousness, have the vision, have the journey, and then return to this realm, to this state of consciousness, and depict what they saw on the walls. Um, and uh, this, um, so this is the mystery because people from all different cultures and different parts of the world not in contact with one another, separated by thousands of years, they're all showing the same imagery, you know. Yeah. It's universal and it's not enough to say that, as some scientists try to do, to say that, oh, you know, this is just your brain on drugs, not at all. No. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a window through into other worlds and we are faithfully visiting those worlds and returning and recording what we saw. That's what's happening. Most of the art around here is that Anastasi, but this is but one of the few caves said. that right. actually has 5,000 plus year old right. Right. art in it. Right. Right. This guy, I mean, I think maybe there used to be a head on this, right. you know, like an ascending figure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See how it's chipping away there? Yeah. yeah and so see eventually one day would see maybe the whole yeah. surface yeah. just... Unfortunately it will, yeah. and you know, it may be the case that, you know, there was a whole lot more art around here. I, 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 I can tell. Yeah, just been, just and it's just kind of crusted away.
Yeah. You know what I find interesting with this one too is that there is no Anasazi yeah. uh, later, so newer in these caves. It's like they right. knew that it was a sacred place. They yeah, left it alone. They didn't. They left it alone. And uh, this, this particular it. device, you can see uh, the identical thing uh, in Lascaux <laughs> Cave in France. Absolutely. Really? Uh, but yet, yeah, there's no, there's no, <laughs> no exchange. No, yeah. no contact. Wow. And so it's only can only be explained that they were seeing the same things and um, and recording them. In the case of Lasco, you might find a horse behind it with the grid, you know, mm. superimposed mm. in front of it. There's there's some some uh, human uh, figurines that have their arms out with these lines coming down with yeah. little balls on them. That right. somebody, uh, I think it was Brett, explained to me that, that someone explained to him that was some sort of a calendar. Mm. I, um, yes, uh, I just don't. I, I know. I've heard all these theories. I, I, I've, I, I'm just convinced that that the that it's largely not that. It may. They may. They, in, I'm not denying that they had calendars and that they that they observed the heavens and the stars very very closely. But but um, this this universal form of expression. Um, is uh, the simplest way to explain it is that that these artists were in a deeply visionary state mm -hmm. and and you can put modern volunteers in labs and give them you know peyote or, mm -hmm. or give them uh, DMT. Uh, DMT and uh, they will come back with those visions mm -hmm. and they will if you ask them to draw what they saw it looks like this. Mm. With, and also with the figures, you know, the, the beings, the entities that you <coughs> meet with, with, with glowing penumbra of light surrounding them. Perhaps that's what this mm -hmm. flow from the arms mm -hmm. is, a kind of aura is the next of light. Level kind of Which is a beautiful thing for us because we get a ticket through psychedelics to go to back. To that time and place. Yeah. Yeah. To that time and place. Exactly. I know, it's time travel, yeah. basically. Yeah. That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. And, and, and so it allows us a community of experience with these ancient yeah. people yeah. from th thousands of years ago, and that's a, that's a rare gift. I think uh, it's time to dose home. up. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, and, we've, and we're totally dependent on the technological fix. And we think that, that that's the only way to do things. And we're very good at it. Right, just right. like just like you know, 400,000 years ago, they were very good at chipping out a certain kind of stone axe, which they kept on chipping out for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. They never changed it. We also like that. We're, you we're, know, I've heard an interesting statistic. There was a um, uh, some sort of a polling that estimated there were about 25,000 people in the United States who as of six to eight months ago had tried DMT. Right. And that the number right now is closer to a half a million. Yeah, it's catching, and that it's, it's spreading very, very widely. It could be a million by within the next 12 months. Yeah. Interesting with this cultural shift in yeah. this psycho demographic yeah. of two million conscious consumers, yeah. that that's yeah. a major tool. I think it's, the, a, it's really important. I mean, what what happened in the, it, it, it almost started in the 60s, and it's not an accident that the 60s were a phase of incredible creativity. Look at the music, the music. Look, and look at the computers that came, also came out of the 60s, and, and all of this absolutely connected to psychedelics. And then, you know, Big Brother steps in and just smashes us all down and fills us with fear and terror and convinces us uh, with all sorts of lies and propaganda about, about, about how, how, how dangerous this stuff is supposed to be. And then we have, we have 40 years of terror and fear and, and, and paranoia. And what's happening now is people are beginning to cast that aside and, and, and work with the visionary plants again. As a scientist and a scientific experiment, go to the Amazon, drink ayahuasca ten times. Let's see if you still feel the same way. <laughs> Let's see what happens.